In this video, Kaylee makes up for not seeing the mega Hudsonian Godwit on the last video, and we go on a very tough search for a very large turn. Hey folks, uh, we are heading to Burton Mere Wetlands on the Wirral. Um, we've got a short window this weekend, a 24 hour one, because there was a big family event yesterday. Um, so anyway, Burton Mears got a mega that I saw on the last video, but Kaylee didn't. No, I didn't see it. So we're heading back there. Apologies to all of you who saw the last video and have seen this bird. I haven't, so I'm going. But Kaylee hasn't, <laughs> and it's a mega. So we've got a mad rush now to hope A, it's still there, and B, I can get a parking spot in an enormous van. Um, Okay. Um, oh! Let's go! <laughs> With me having some shocking deja vu, we headed as fast as we could to Burton Mare, hoping we'd get a parking spot as the news broke about this returning mega over an hour before we'd got there. We're here and I'm walking very fast. Uh, Kaylee's there in front of me. Dragging She's dragging me. I'm out of breath. I'm really out of shape. Uh, she wants to get there to see it. Uh, stick with us. Luckily, with the help of one of the wardens on the car park, we managed to find one of the last parking spots. Kaylee set the pace as we headed to Border Hyde. A fast pace. I felt really out of shape. Pausing briefly to see a blurry heron, and also this little shrew that was wandering around in the undergrowth. Finally arriving at a very busy Border Hyde. And we looked out onto the pool in front of us. Although it was a bit of a scrum in the hide, we did notice some familiar faces who helped us finding positions where we could get a better view of the roosting waders in front of us. And although there was more godwits here than when I was here earlier in the week, a lot of the other birders did have eyes on the Hudsonian godwit. And although everybody else could see it, including Kaylee through someone else's scope, I really struggled to find it in the camera. But eventually picked it out, it was right in the middle of the flock. And after plenty of time roosting with its head under its wing, it finally woke up and began to have a bit of a preen. This was excellent, as the previous time it slept almost all the time I was there, barring once when it lifted its head up, had a scratch, and then went back to sleep. For those of you who didn't see the last video, this is a very, very rare bird in the UK, with only about six confirmed records. This species breeds in some remote parts of northern Canada and Alaska, and migrates to South America in the winter. So this particular individual is well out of its range. And although it might be very lost, it seems pretty at home amongst the other godwits, occasionally getting a bit of a hard time off one or two as it wandered around the group. What a fantastic bird and a lifer for Kaylee. She was over the moon, especially with it being relatively close and it being far, far more active than when I was there previously in the week. It was amazing for Kaylee to finally get this bird as she missed it earlier in the week. And I enjoyed seeing it more active than the previous time. It was also nice to see some familiar faces in the hide too. And although we could have stuck around for much longer as the bird was putting on quite a show, we did have all the birds to try and find and a limited amount of time. And our next target bird was a good couple of hours away. So we hit the road. But pretty soon, we had problems. We got stuck in almost standing traffic for about an hour, significantly delaying our journey. And when we finally arrived in Yorkshire, it was getting quite late. Hey folks, we're at the Swillington Ings side of uh, St. Aidan's Nature Reserve. Um, last time we heard it was raining very a lot, but yeah, it was really muddy. it's, yeah, it's hopefully it. not too bad now. Um, we don't really know where we are, we're just kind of hoping for the best. We did just see another birder kind of go in this direction, so. It hasn't been reported. But this bird hasn't been reported since midday and it's now after five. So let's see. Track see what we can find. Fingers crossed. After parking the car, we followed another birder who was also trying to follow directions to where the Caspian turn we were after had been seen earlier that day. Eventually, we found a break in the trees where there was a couple of other birders looking over a pool where there was a spit of mud and rocks. This is where the Caspian Tern had been roosting for most of the day, but apparently it had flown off about 10 or 15 minutes before we arrived. Cursing the traffic which delayed us, we stuck around for a little bit, hoping it might return, 
watching all the other birds present, like cormorants and gulls. At one point we did have a lovely view of this quite scraggy looking female marsh harrier as she hunted over the marshes. Chatting to one of the other birders there, it seems this Caspian tern spends its day here and then in the afternoon it generally flies off about half an hour's drive away to a nearby reservoir, which I think is pronounced Ecup Reservoir. So we thought we'd at least give that a try before the sun goes down. Hello. Hello folks, uh, we got there and the turn had left about 10 or 15 minutes before we arrived. Traffic for you. So that was the traffic didn't help with that. Excuse the cups clanging behind me. There's lots of speed bumps. So we're heading now to a reservoir nearby, about half an hour away, that this turn went to yesterday afternoon. In the hope that we find it. Fingers crossed. Let's go. It's late on now. It's nearly seven o'clock. So this is our last chance saloon for the day. So stick with us. When we arrived, the sun was very low in the sky. We parked up and had a little walk around. A gentleman stopped his car to tell me that the Caspian Turn had been there recently, which was very encouraging. So we headed along the dam where it had been seen fishing on previous occasions. But as we scanned the scene in front of us, there was no sign of it. There were dozens and dozens of grey lag geese. And as we scanned further out, hoping for a sight of the Caspian Turn, there were only black headed gulls. We did wander up and down the dam for about an hour, hoping that it'd show up. We did see this lovely grey wagtail that was feeding along the water's edge, but unfortunately no sign of our target species. And as the sun was going down and our stomachs were rumbling and we were getting bitten to shreds by midges, we decided to grab some dinner and find somewhere to park for the night. Hey folks, unfortunately the Caspian turn evaded us. Uh, we arrived and somebody said they'd seen it there. Ten but minutes before. Ten minutes, uh, yeah, same as the other place, yeah. So, um, not the best. Never mind. So, we've ended up parking up not far from St. Aidan's. And we're going to, like, through persistence, try again in the morning. And fingers crossed we will get it. Kaylee's kind of got to be in a bonnet. She wants to get this one. It's been seen for the last seven days, though. Yeah, it's frustrating when it's uh, you keep missing it by a few minutes. But anyway, let's hope for the morning. I've got a pizza in front of me that I'm going to eat now, and we're going to call it a night. So see you tomorrow. The following morning, I got up early. We parked at a place called Lynn Dyke, which is part of the Fair Burnings RSPB Reserve. As Kaylee was getting ready, I took a brief walk down the footpath to a screen which overlooked a pool. On the pool, there were plenty of birds, including many black-headed gulls, some roosting and some in the distance. There were cormorants fishing and common terns with the gulls. Closer to the edge, there were some wading birds, like these lapwings. There was also a ruff that was feeding in the mud. I couldn't stay here long though, because we had a score to settle and a turn to find. I went back to the van and we set off towards Swillington Ings. Kaylee was pretty confident that we'd find the Caspian Turn. I was less so. But regardless, we headed to the spot where it had been roosting the previous day. When we arrived, there was no other birders there. It was just us. So we looked over at the pool and the mud spit in the hope that our Caspian Turn, that we'd missed twice the previous day, was there. After watching this young great crested grebe pestering its parent, I set about searching through all the birds that were roosting on the mud and very quickly came across something that looked different than the black headed gulls. It was turn shaped, it was pretty big and it had a black hood. I was pretty confident this was our bird, but the really diagnostic large red bill wasn't to be seen as it was roosting with its head under its wing. So we waited and luckily our patience paid off. After a short while, the bird lifted its head, moved itself around a bit, and then went back to sleep. But it was enough to get a view of that big red bill. Hey babe, what's over there? The Caspian tip. It is. <laughs> we came here and we were the only people here, and we found it almost immediately. Sleeping though. Sleeping, yeah. <laughs> it stuck its head up a bit. Had a go at a coot. Had a little bit of a preen. But it is there. But it is there. 
and we've got it. We stuck around for a bit longer and the bird became more active, at one point spending quite some time preening. This is Europe's largest tern and one that doesn't breed in the UK, although one pair has bred in Poland this year, which apparently is a first. This is also a bird we've only ever seen abroad before, so this is the first one we've seen in this country, which is excellent. As we'd invested so much time in finding this bird, successfully I might add, we didn't have that much time left, but enough to have a little bit of an explore around an RSPB reserve we'd never been to before. <laughs> hey folks, we're at Oldmore RSPB in the Durham Valley. It's somewhere we've not been before, so I thought on the way home from our successful Caspian turn mission, we'd come and see what's here. So join us, let's find out. We took the green trail, which followed round to some hides. The first hide was pretty lively with birds, mainly waterfowl and waders like lapwings, coot and moorhens. There were a few ducks present too. All of these were gadwall, some in various stages of molt. A little further out, Kaylee spotted this hunting grey heron that was fishing near this post. This wasn't the only species trying to catch some fish. There was also both little egret, like this one that was sat on the bank, and this very successful and very close great white egret that was fishing near the bank. We watched it for a while walking in front of us and at one point it did catch a very little fish which it swallowed down whole. We now moved on to the next hide which looked over quite a large pool with some islands. There were a lot of gulls present here including this lesser blackback gull that was sat on a post and on a large bank that splits the pool in two there was a swan with an alarming amount of signets. I wonder if this was a bit of a crash from a few broods. I did spot some movement on the edges of the water. This happened to be a pied wagtail that was hunting for flies. At this point, we left the hide and moved on to the next one. This hide was excellent. It looked over another pool that was split in two by a bank, but the highlight here was the quantity of spoonbill. Not only was there about six or seven of them, some of them were astonishingly close. And although I know they breed not too far from here at Fairburnings, I'd never seen this many in one place in the UK. This was a real treat. Before we left this hide, I scanned the other side of the pool and had distant views of some other waders, like Greenshank. There was about half a dozen of this species present. Also, there were some black-tailed godwits too. Just as we were about to leave, I did see this pair of little greed that were fishing in the shallow water. This reserve is excellent, and probably one of our favourites we've been to. Not only are the hides excellent, there's a lot of amenities for families, and on top of that, it's got a wonderful cafe, where we grabbed our lunch for our journey home. It had been an interesting 24 hours, with Kaylee picking up the mega that she'd missed earlier in the week, and are spending an awful lot of time looking for a turn, which we finally found. Thanks so much for watching, please like, please subscribe, and please press the notification bell. We'll see you on the next adventure.